As promised, we are now joined by Mike Simonson, the founder of Altus Research, now part of HW Media. Mike, how are you today? Hey, man, I'm great. Nice to be here. Always. So let's let's start just by talking about the state of the market. I know that there's a lot to talk about between what's actually going on in, in the housing market and then the, uh, the the whole ruling at real estate commissions. But let, let's start with the housing market. What are inventory levels doing at this point, and how does that compare to what we've seen in prior years? So it's uh, inventory is still climbing as of this week, which is very little for inventory to climb. Normally by you know, October, by September even, uh, inventory would be declining for the fall. There'd be less homes that were purchased, you know, fewer listers after school starts and before the holidays. And so normally inventory would be, cl- would be falling by now. But because we had a pretty big mortgage rate spike in September and October this year, mortgage rates went from around seven to around eight. That really slows any buyers, anybody who is maybe in the pipeline. A lot of those people don't make offers. And so the inventory builds up and, and that happened last year at the same time. Um, and, but it's really unusual for inventory to be climbing this late in the year. What's wild is that it's still, we're still actually very restricted in almost all areas of the country. Very few homes for sale. There's a couple of markets like Austin, Texas, whose inventory is, is higher than it, it it has been in the last uh, bunch of years but most of the country especially like the the central and the northeast uh, are still really at the pandemic lows of available inventory of homes you can buy so when we look at this in the context of where home prices are the, most people typically think okay mortgage rates have, have gone up that means that prices have to come down but to this point we haven't seen that what's what, what's the deal here mike at what, at what point do higher inventory levels start to bite on pricing? Yeah. So, uh, you know, if housing demand is so low, why haven't home prices fallen? So home prices did correct down late last year um, in the adjustment from the super hot to, you know, the cold, colder market that we had this year. So they did adjust weight uh, down at that time. Uh, at the first half of 2023, there were surprising numbers of buyers. And they kept a floor on pricing. And in fact, there was more buyers and sellers. So inventory fell for the first half of the year and uh, rates were in the sixes. And then uh, and so that actually pushed home prices up. So right now, even though, you know, we're at eight percent mortgage rates, uh, home prices will end 2023 with probably a two or three percent gain over last year, which is really surprising. I wouldn't, I didn't guess that a year ago. Mm. That was not in my expectations at all. But that's really where we are. Um, and so, you know, if rates stay at eight percent into uh, 2024 you can expect that demand will stay weak. Affordability is difficult, right? So that's like the obvious. Um, But what's also interesting is if you think about home prices like coming down notably, dramatically um, crashing, like a scenario there would, would take demand to be low and supply to be high. So uh, and we only have half that equation, right? So basically both demand and supply are very low. And that's really kind of kept a surprising balance for home prices. If you're a buyer, your selection's still pretty light right now. And so there are enough people with enough cash that are buying the homes that are keeping the prices roughly flat. There's no signals that prices are going to you know, increase dramatically either. But, but as of right now, they're staying uh, fairly fairly flat and we can look at 2024 if rates drift lower from here like they did at the beginning of this year you can imagine more buyers inventory fall uh and therefore uh prices to have a little bit of upward pressure if rates go higher from here which you know who i never expected they'd be at eight percent so maybe they sure. go to nine um if they go higher from here that's going to have the opposite effect so we'd see inventory build we'd see fewer buyers and then you could expect another round at least a uh a minor round of home price declines in 2024. mike what do you make of the uh the case yesterday the, the ruling of uh, against the national association of realtors conspiring to keep uh 
commissions high for real estate agents. A, do you think this actually sticks or does it end up getting reversed at some point? B, if it does stick, how does it change what people would see as they're buying a home or selling a home? Yeah, so I'm not a I'm not a legal expert, but yeah. here's my take as a as a as a, a really a, stu- a student of the industry. Um, the a couple of things were notable about that the the jury came back in like 90 minutes uh, with the full guilty verdict. They they uh, and so they were really convinced. So it doesn't. So that says to me that. Even in other cases and other places, like it seems likely that um, that that is going to be a common result. This was just Missouri. So there's already a bunch of copycat lawsuits. There's a lot more to happen in the case. Um, and then, you know, so then um, there, there'll be an AR and that you know, obviously the defendants are talking about uh, appealing, which would make sense. Uh, I understand it. It's very expensive to appeal. Like it's a it's a $1.8 billion uh, verdict with treble damages. So it's like five and a half billion dollars yeah. for just Missouri. So like you have to put up a bond to be able to appeal. So I don't know what, how all that plays out. Uh, it seems like a, it's a really big deal on that side. The question that's on my mind, Jack, is like, is like what does it mean for consumers? Yeah. So exactly. everybody, the, the you know people think about like the the lawsuit was well hey I, I spend too much uh, for to buy a house for the 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 seller pays the buyer's agent and uh, and so that'll likely go away um, where now the buyer will have to pay their own agent and so one of two things happens I think one is either more people go to buy houses and they don't use agents anymore and so yep. they're not represented. Uh, and then maybe that's cheaper for them, or maybe that's a worse outcome uh, because they don't have somebody fighting for them. Hard to know. Um, and, or the other thing that might happen is that now if I've got to pay my buyer's agent, I'm already strapped for my down payment. Right Now I have to pay my buyer's agent. And so now I demand even comes out further from the housing market. Um, like that's a scenario that I don't think people are really have been really, uh, um, especially the consumer side who just like thinks it's going to be quickly cheaper. And I, like, I think there are a lot of scenarios where it could be, you know, a, a much more difficult environment for buyers once we disrupt how we do it in this country. Fantastic. Mike, we've got to run, but thanks so much for joining us. Always great to talk to you and we will catch up soon. Thanks, Chuck.